evening and welcome to TR Physics and today I am going to talk about how a uniform electric field can affect the trajectory of a charged particle. And what we're going to be using today is a little bit of SUVA and projectile motion. So what I've got here is I've got a particle that is two nanocoulombs and I'm just dropping it through this object here. Now this object has is weighs 0.5 milligrams. So what is going to happen is it's actually going to be affected by two fields at once. When it's dropping, it's going to be affected by the gravitational field of the Earth, and therefore it's going to be pulled straight down. So like in projectile motion, my acceleration in the y-axis is going to be minus 9.81. Now, what is a little bit different in the first year is this. I have got this here, and I have got an electric field like this. Okay, and so when my charged particle, which is positive to nanocoulombs, is going to fall in here, what's going to happen is it's going to be affected by these field lines. And because this is a positive charge, it is going to follow the direction of these field lines. So it's actually going to start deflecting like this. What we're going to do... So we're going to use a little bit of SUVA and we're going to work out this deflection here. So let's have a go. I've got S, U, V, A and T. I've got X and Y. So my Y direction, I am going 0.75 metres. My initial speed is going to be zero. I don't know my final speed. And this is going to be 9.81. As with all projectile motion, the time is equal. Now, I don't know my displacement in my x direction. I know my initial speed is zero. But this is where it is slightly different from first year. In first year, you would say that in the x direction, my acceleration is zero. But you can't say that here because clearly he's having a force applying on him in the x direction. So there will be an acceleration. So I need to find that. And for this, I'm going to have to use electric fields. Because if I can work out the force that that particle is feeling, I can work out its acceleration. So first stop, before we finish this SUVA, I am going to find out the force that this object is feeling. So E, electric field strength, is force over charge. I want to know the force, but I only know the charge. I don't know the field strength. But this is a uniform electric field. There is another formula I can work out to work out the electric field strength, and that is E equals potential difference over the distance between those plates there. So I'm going to use this formula because I know the potential difference and I know the distance to work out my field strength, and I'm going to use this formula here to work out my force. So... E equals 45 times 10 to the 3 over my distance of 0 0.5. So my field strength, so it's 45, 3, it's going to be 90,000 newtons per coulomb. I'm now going to try and find the force. So I know that this value for my field strength also equals force divided by the charge. And my charge is 2 nanocoulombs. So my force is going to be 90, 1, 2, 3, times by 2 times 10 to the minus 9, which equals 1.8 times 10 to the minus 4 newtons. So I've worked out my force. 
I'm going to be using Newton's second law to work out my acceleration because my motion and my force are in the same direction. So taking this force, F equals ma, 1.8 times 10 to the minus 4 equals 0.5 times 10 to the minus 3 times by a. Okay. Oh, even more than that. 10 to the minus 6, because it is in milligrams. Remember, I want it in kilograms. So my acceleration is going to be 360 meters per second squared. Okay. <coughs> so that's that there. So this here is going to be 360. And this is something that's really, really important. Milligrams is 0.5 times 10 to the minus 3 grams, which means it's going to be 0.5 times 10 to the minus 6 kilograms. So let's do my SUVAT to work out my time. So I'm going to use... S equals UT plus a half a T squared to work out this time here. So U is zero, so which means this part's zero. So I'm going to have S, I'm going to have minus 0.75 equals a half times minus 9.81 T squared. So T squared equals... So t squared is 0.15, which means t is 0.39. Which means this is also 0.39. To work out s, I'm going to use the same again. s equals ut plus a half a t squared, and u is 0. So s equals a half a, so 360, times by 0.39 squared. So at the moment, this object is moving 27.5 metres in the time it takes to drop this. And this is because it's such a small mass, OK? which means its acceleration is quite big. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to slightly change it up a bit. And we're going to put it down to a little bit different here. I'm going to make this 0.5 grams. OK. So we're going to change this up. So my, everything up to my force, my field strength, is exactly the same. What's going to happen is my field, my actual acceleration would change too. Okay, so this here would be turned to the minus three, which means my acceleration will be 1.8 times 10 to the minus four divided by 0.5 times 10 to the minus three. Oops, 1.8 times 10 to the minus four divided by point. 5 times 10 to the minus 3. My acceleration is going to be 0 0.36, which means here is going to be 0 0.36. Now, my time is not going to change at all because this part, my y-axis, has nothing to do with that electric field. So, <clears throat> doing it again. S equals ut plus a half a t squared. That is 0. So S is going to be a half times 0.36 times 0.39 squared. And that's going to be 2 centimetres. Okay, so this object, which is a little bit heavier, so it's not going to accelerate as much, is not going to deflect as much. Okay? 
Because remember, this object is feeling the same force. It didn't matter what mass that force was, because this is all to do with charge. But it did affect its acceleration. So that there is an example of using uniform electric field strength to work out the acceleration and to work out what would happen if an object moved through that in being affected by both a gravitational field and an electric field. So that there is projectile motion in electric fields.